I'm going to take all the necessary dimensions and measurements to get a custom leaf spring made up for the front of the rogue rat rod. Stick around and I'll show you what I do. <laughs> In a previous video, I talked about the reasons for wanting to change the transverse leaf spring on the scar. <laughs> Should be a link up here somewhere if you want to see it, hopefully. <laughs> um, so yes, let's start with that. So the idea is now that I want to engineer a new spring. So here in SA, South Africa, we're not as lucky as some that we can just buy this kind of stuff off of a shelf. I'm going to actually have to get this made. I need to give the, those guys some specifications. So my first step is to determine what is the weight of the front of the car. Um, look, I'm no automotive engineer. I'm just a fabricator living in the bush. <laughs> um, but I've got some common sense, so that makes sense to me. So that's the first thing I want to do. So I was um, lucky to get hold of a load cell, which comes with a readout. Yeah, you can see the readout maybe. Capes get stuck. So what this will do is essentially a scale, a heavy duty scale. So the plan now is to put the weight, complete weight of the front of the car on top of the load cell and we will be able to measure quite actually accurately what it weighs. So let's get going on that. I've taken the front wheels off. So the complete front of the car is resting on the jack at the moment, which means if I lower this, it will drop. Um, I've got some safety blocks in there, in case you're concerned about it. So the plan now is to move the load cell in to a point where I can rest the complete front of the car on top of it, and then get a readout. So I'm just going to move it in here, uh, hope you can see. Okay, that should be pretty good. Somewhere there. Okay, so the front end of the car is resting completely on the jack. I've got the load cell positioned underneath the chassis at a point where when I lower the jack, the whole front end will rest on it. Here in the front is the readout of the load cell. It's currently reading minus 10 kilos. So we will just add 10 kilos when we get the actual final measurement. So I'm going to lower the car now gently. Let's see what happens. There we go. And you can see that load cell is starting to climb. I'm going to lower it completely until the jack is free. There we go. So you can see here, I'm going to zoom in. I've got a readout of 490 kilos. So if I add my under reading of 10 kilos, that's actually spot on 500 kilos. So before someone thinks a little bit further ahead, let me say it, that includes the unsprung weight, which is what? It's the weight of the front axle, the shock absorbers, those mud guards, the disc, the brake assemblies, etc etc so all the weight that is not actually moving if i can say it like that th 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 those that weight stays on the wheels so it can't be included so we need to actually subtract it from this reading um, if you want to do this 100 percent accurately i need to remove the front axle with everything that is connected to it i'm not going to do that that would mean i need to redo the brake bleeding, etc, etc. So I'm going to just estimate the weight of the front axle. Let's call it an educated guess. Um, I do have another one exactly the same. So maybe I'll weigh that and add a little value to it 
to, to, to make up for those mud guards, um, and then subtract it from my 500 kilos. So now I know that the front end of the car, the weight that's sitting on the front spring, is 500 kilos minus the weight of the axle and all its bits and pieces. Okay, this is interesting. I think if you uh, look at it now, it's still sitting, sitting on the load cell. So the axle is hanging free. But as I jack now, I'm going to start taking up the weight. I'm jacking right underneath the axle. And you can see, let me just get it to that point. There we go. And now as I go up, see how the girly legs move. As the weight gets taken up, the spring compresses and now I've got the car sitting on the axle which is the same as the car sitting on the wheels. You can see down here I'm going to move down, the load cell is now not reading anything again, back to its original value. Next thing I want to do is measure the spring from eye to eye or then from the center of the bolts on either side. This is the desk distance that is I'm getting 60 just a little bit more than 65 let's call it 653 millimeters the spring is under compression so this is the distance from eye to eye with the spring under compression 650 three millimeters so I'm just taking as many measurements as I can I'm gonna now measure that eye to eye distance again with the spring not under compression so it's hanging clear the weight of the car is sitting on blocks and you can obviously it needs to be a little bit less and I am measuring 648 millimeters so not a lot of difference but yes it's good to have as many measurements as possible with my background I was taught what you can measure you can treasure <laughs> the next measurement is actually very tricky and difficult to show on the camera but I want to measure the spring arch, the vertical distance between where the spring rests on this bracket or is attached to the car or the chassis, vertical distance to the <coughs> just it's hard to see, eh? to the center of the spring eye. A picture is worth a thousand words. Here's my transverse leaf spring. This is the chassis. So the weight bearing on the spring is 500 kilos, which I've measured with the load cell. I've got to subtract the weight of the axle attached to the spring, because that's unsprung weight. The distance from eye to eye when the spring is loaded, 653 millimeters. Distance I to I when the spring is unloaded, 648 millimeters must be very close to each other. And what I now measured is the arch distance. That's the attachment point, so the distance between there and this straight line running through the eye centers. This distance is measured when its spring is loaded at 83 millimeters that's actually the important dimension because this determines my ride height i would actually want it a little bit more than that because i do feel the front of the car is a little too low i'm going to leave all of that to the spring manufacturers they need to determine with the load applied what the thickness of the spring will need to be so that I get an arch distance loaded of a value I'm going to probably say 100 millimeters. So as I said I'm not an automotive engineer or anything like that. 
Um, I'm just applying common sense. So I'm going to make a drawing very similar to this and send it to the spring makers. Hear what they have to say. Maybe they ask, want more information. I will hear their story and then hopefully they can make me the spring that I need. I decided to go to the trouble of walling out this old axle so I can just weigh it as well. So it's exactly the same as the one that's in the car. So I'm just weighing it to actually determine what my unsprung weight is. Um, my current readout is 30 kilos. It excludes the calipers and the discs and the hub assembly. So it will actually weigh a little bit more. Um, I'm going to call it 50 kilos. Um, so I need to subtract that from my total measurement that I showed earlier, which was 500. So I'm going to call the front end weight sitting on the spring 450. <laughs> so I was going to take the spring out, but you know what, it's pointless to do it at this stage. Um, I've got enough dimensions, I think, uh, to make a drawing to send to the spring makers. So I'm just going to put the car back on its wheels. It means I can still push it around the shop. Maybe even take it for a little drive. <laughs> um, yes, so um, listen, by the way, if you don't know, understand kilograms, one kilogram is about 2.2 pounds. So if we, what would we measure here? We measured 450 kilos sitting on the front with transverse leaf spring. That would be roughly 450 times 2.2, a little bit more than a thousand pounds of car front weight sitting on the spring. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take for me to get the new spring made. We'll have to wait and see. When I do receive it back, we can start installing it. Definitely make a video about that one so I can share it with you guys and we see how it turns out. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I'm going to catch you on the next one.